let's look at section 2 IT for management chapter 2 which is on data life cycle we've spoken about what data is data as we've seen is a fact and uh, there are so many facts being captured throughout the organization so a customer places an order is a fact a supplier uh, sends material and it's received that's a fact uh, th there's a salary being paid is a fact there are so many transactions happening all the time in the organization which are facts now having captured all these facts there's a whole lot of processing that happens depending on which system it is information is being created out of it for different people and it is being consumed now what happens to the entire st stage right from capture of data to its and uh, usage or beyond that in fact even up to storage and disposal of that data is what you can call as a data life cycle now why is data life cycle important in today's world data is considered as an asset and if anything is an asset for example if you have a uh, costly asset that you own uh, won't you take care of the entire life cycle stages of that asset right from the purchase to its uh, usage, to its maintenance, to its various modifications that you do to the asset and to even its disposal. You value the asset so much and if that's the perspective that we take about any asset, data is no different and which is why the notion of life cycle for data is so important. But the other important reason why we are looking at uh, life cycle as a concept is when you are designing information systems as a good information system designer. I must keep in mind that I should design an information system keeping in mind every stage in the data life cycle. Many a time what happens is the information system is partially designed and some stages let's say typically the end stages like disposal of information is just not considered and then you have a whole pile up of information in the organization people don't know what to do with it and they demand more storage space and then you create that storage space and then they still fill it up and then you just don't know how old the records you can keep and then people say why don't you dump it in a go down somewhere and why are they storing it nobody knows probably they say that our income tax people might need it our regulators might need it shouldn't there be a proper policy and a mechanism and a process and a system which defines as to how long you should keep a data and therefore it's important that information system stages right from creation to the uh, disposal of information or data has to be understood and designed well by the information systems analyst. So what are the various stages that we come across? Typically a data or information goes through these following stages. It is first created, sometimes it's created outside but many a time it's created within the organization and you capture it. So capture becomes the next logical stage while capturing it you typically validate the data. What validation typically means is, is the name correct? Is it, uh, is the date of birth taken okay? Have you captured the photograph of the person? Whatever is appropriate in that context, you, these checks that you put on the incoming data is something which you call as validation. Then typically you would store the data and then you would retrieve it and process it in various ways. So you might sort it, you might merge it, you might take away a few columns and use it for some report generation. All that is part of your processing uh, steps that you follow. And this could happen over time. So for example, some information you process just once a year. For example, you calculate the uh, premium due on an insurance claim, on an insurance policy once a year, let's say, and then depending on the frequency of payment of insurance, so on and so forth. So the number of times that you process, the kind of processing that you do, will vary depending on the nature of the data or the information that you are handling. Then comes the issue about presentation. So it could be about generating that premium notice to the customer. It could be about preparing an MIS report to a top executive. It could be any of those and it could be on any medium for example. So you could have a hard copy or you could have a screen based dashboard which is being shown so on and so forth. Then comes backup. Uh, many a time you need to store data for a long purpose. Also, you are running systems online these days and what happens if that data crashes? For some reason there is a virus, some reason there is a corruption of data. How do you recover from such failures? So you need to have backup of data 
and therefore backup becomes an important process which you need to consciously design and why I'm saying design because just mere backup is not an easy uh, thing to do you have say online transactions happening all the time and can I take a backup simultaneously while the updations are happening is a question to ask or am I required to take it only at night when there are no transactions happening or is it that my business demands that you have 24 by 7 operations so therefore where is the time to take a backup or should I therefore take a downtime and stop the machines for a day and say there is no service available between this time and this time because I am taking a backup at this point. So these are thoughts which you need to apply consciously in designing a backup mechanism. Uh, then you have archival which is an extension of the concept of backup. Archival is long term storage of data for example my uh, authorities, financial authorities, etc. say you need to keep records for seven years. Now, if that is so, every transaction that I have in, entered into the last seven years have to be stored. And how can I store it? Perhaps on tape, and that's an easy way of storing archival copies. Uh, the last but not the least is the disposal, which I've spoken so much about when we began this topic on life cycle. And therefore, you need to consciously design how you dispose. And it's not just about data, but even devices which contain that data. For example, if you have a laptop which you are going to now surrender to your company and the company plans to sell it off because it's old and outdated and they give you a nice tablet PC to work on, what happens to the data on the laptop, on the hard disk of the laptop? Is it safe for you to just throw it away? Will it go to the Raddiwala and he's going to recover that data which could be confidential for the company? So what should you do? And therefore there has to be a disposal policy which is well defined. What happens to confidential reports which are lying on my table? How should I deal with them? When there is an expiry of that report, should I just dump it in the waste paper basket or should I put it through a uh, paper shredder for example? So these are practices which you need to evolve which handle the entire life cycle of the data correctly. With that we come to the end of the chapter on data life cycle. Thank you for joining me.